Good morning. Welcome to God's house this morning. Today is the third Sunday of Advent. In our gospel lesson, we have a story once again about John the Baptist, only this time from Mark's gospel. John is not the one who baptizes Jesus in John's gospel. He's the one who bears witness to Jesus. And it's a reminder to each of us to, of our invitation to bear witness to Jesus the Christ. Welcome to all of you. Welcome from wherever you are tuning in, whether it's here locally in Door County or another location around the country. We are so glad that you're here, and we pray that this service will be a blessing to you. I want to say a word of thanks to those who are making this recorded service possible. Tom Tuttle taking care of our technical matters. Carol Omernick, who has uploaded to the website resources to assist you in worship today. Linda Petrushka, who will be sharing a word with, from, for the children. Greg Beam, leading our song from the organ. Judy Jackson from the piano and also coordinating our singers. And our singers this morning, Sandy Sinis, Cheryl Becht, John Skogsbakken, Lyle Amundsen. And we want to say a big thank you to the Butts family, who is going to be uh, sharing their Advent lighting ceremony with us this morning in the service. Once again, there are two opportunities to meet virtually this week. Sunday conversation at 11 o'clock via Zoom, Tuesday Bible class at 9 o'clock via Zoom. The invitation to both of those was in your Saturday email. And speaking of the Saturday email, we have shortened the announcements for these recorded services. And so I want to make sure that you are looking uh, in your inbox on Saturday morning for our weekly email. It's the way that we communicate our most up-to-date news with our members and friends. May God bless our worship this morning.
I hope you have your Advent wreath right in front of you as we prepare to light our Advent wreaths. If you have a pink candle on your Advent wreath, today is the Sunday to light it. The pink Sunday always stands for the third Sunday in Advent, which is Rejoice Sunday. And you'll hear that theme of rejoicing in our second lesson this morning. And once again, we thank the Butts family for sharing their Advent lighting wreath and making it a part of our service this morning. The Advent lighting ritual includes a call and response, and the congregational response to each one of the calls is, we're ready. So we invite you to join with the Butts family. We're ready. Church God, are you ready? We're ready. We're ready. Are you ready to meet the Lord? No. Church of God, are you ready? We're ready. We're ready. Are you ready to greet the Lord? Church of God, get ready. We're ready. We're ready. Get ready and wait for the Lord. Those, Those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall soar with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not grow faint. Let us pray. We praise you, O God, for this victory wreath that marks our days of preparation for Christ's advent. As we light the candles on this wreath, strengthen our hearts as we wait for the Lord's coming in glory. Enlighten us with your grace that we may serve our neighbors in need. Grant this through Christ our Lord, whose coming is certain and whose day draws near. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with, with you. you. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open, and open our, our ears to the words of your prophets, that, that anointed by your, your spirit, spirit, we may, we may testify, testify to your light. light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, 
to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. To God.
reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely and make your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the, straight the way of the Lord as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O oh Christ. Christ. And now here's Linda with a word for the children. We've been sharing ways that we are getting ourselves prepared. Prepared for Christmas. Prepared for the birth of Jesus. And finding ways that we can be a witness. Well, I was thinking about one more thing that I have in my house that I always have at Christmas time that helps me be prepared. A candy cane. Hmm, how can a candy cane help me get prepared? Well, I have a little book for you I want to share. It's called J is for Jesus. The candy maker was eager to share his holiday treat with everyone there. He held up a red and white peppermint stick the children all wanted to give it a lick. I made this candy, he explained that day. I shaped it to look like the letter J. J is for Jesus, God's son sent to earth. And Christmas is when we remember his birth. But when I turn the candy around, to make the letter go upside down, it looks like a staff that the shepherds used. They were the first to hear the good news. As the shepherds were watching their sheep at night, the sky was filled with heavenly light. Angels appeared and started to sing, glory to God for our newborn king. And there in the town where Jesus was born, the shepherds found him all cozy and warm. Their hearts were filled with wonder and joy as they knelt beside the baby boy. I added the stripes to remember the day that Jesus washed all our sins away. He died on the cross. His blood was shed. That's why the stripes are bold and red. 
The white on the candy is there to show that when we're forgiven, we're white as snow. Jesus was born to save us from sin, to make us holy and clean within. I wanted to share this story with you so Jesus can be your savior too. Please tell this story to everyone and give thanks to God for the gift of his son. So remember when you see a candy cane this week that J is for Jesus. Just a few minutes ago, when we prayed together the prayer of the day, we prayed some powerful words. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your light. It's that last phrase. Anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your light that provides the theme for our reflection today. Some of the religious leaders had heard about the crowds that John was commanding in the wilderness. Large numbers of people were leaving the comfort and security of the city to go out into the wilderness to hear a man who wore camel hair garments, who ate off the land, who preached a message of judgment and repentance, none of which, one would expect, would attract great crowds. And yet they came, thousands came. And so naturally, the religious leaders are curious. That's understandable. Who are you, they asked. Though an unlikely possibility, they had to inquire initially whether John might be the Messiah. No, John replied. Cross that one off the list. Next on the list, a question that pertained to the expectation that Elijah would return as a forerunner of the Messiah. Are you Elijah? Again, the answer was no. One of the prophets? No. Nope. So then John takes the stage. John gets to the heart of his message. He is there to point to Jesus. In John's gospel, he doesn't even baptize Jesus. He ever, only, always points to Jesus. Bears witness to Jesus, to his person, his work, and his ongoing invitation into the life of God. That's John's job. That's my job. That's your job. That's our job. To point to Christ. To point to Jesus, the Christ, the one who's coming we are re preparing for. John tells us that Jesus is the light that has come into the world to illumine our lives in the world. He himself was not the light, John tells us, about John the Baptist, but the one who came to testify to the light. Now think about that for a moment. What's the purpose of light? Light doesn't exist for itself. No one in their right mind stares directly into a bright light as if to study it. Light exists to enhance and to reveal and direct us to other things. Light reveals beauty and color. Jesus is the light that reveals the glory of God's goodness, of God's love for us and the whole world, the grace of a God who calls us out of darkness into that marvelous light. And light can also reveal things that we'd maybe rather not see. Shine the light into that dark, often ignored, seldom seen corner of the basement and you may find things there that you wish weren't there. John also knew that light reveals those things we may not care to see. The light of God's call to repentance may reveal those things in our lives that we'd rather ignore. How turned in on ourselves we become, how possessive we can be of things of long-held opinions, of our position and status. 
The light of God's call to repentance reveals some of the systemic and societal sins that Isaiah lists in the first lesson. They were sins that had plagued the exiles who returned from Babylon to Jerusalem. And they are sins that continue to plague us in our own way up to this very day. The income inequality that keeps too many of our neighbors trapped in poverty. The oppressive captivity of racism. The brokenheartedness of loneliness and isolation. John becomes the voice crying in the wilderness to turn us to view and acknowledge what we do not want to see. John bears witness to wrongs that need to be righted. More importantly, John bears witness to the one who has come to right those wrongs. The Greek word for testify bears the full weight of solemn testimony of a witness in a trial. A witness speaks in a contest where truth is disputed. Disagreement about what constitutes truth is one of the primary markers of our age. But in today's gospel lesson, a truth is spoken that cannot be disputed and cannot be torn down. John points to Jesus as the light of the world. John points to Jesus as the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. By the time we get to the end of this gospel, Jesus will ascend the throne of the cross, there to rule the world in the fullness of God's love and mercy. John leaves no room to dispute the truth of Jesus. John bears witness so that people might believe. To believe that God has sent the Lamb means to believe that the world has a need for its sin to be removed, for oppressions to be healed, and for people to be restored. John tells the truth to people about their separation from God and about what God is doing about it. Jesus is the Lamb of God who will take away the sin of the world. That truth, dear church, is not fake news, but good news. We need a constant reminder of this good news because we do not hold this truth to be self-evident. That old, nagging lie persists that we can go it on our own, that somehow we can make ourselves good enough, that our own self-designed religion is sufficient, that sin is always somebody else's fault and never my own. John reminds us, that only in Jesus, only in the gift of God coming along us, among us, can we be saved. This is the truth that we know by faith and that we experience in the loving presence of Christ in our lives. And because we have been given the gift of faith, we in turn tell the story so that others might believe. Every one of the baptized is called to proclaim that Jesus is the light of all people. Jesus is the truth. To bear witness to the truth is to bear witness to Jesus. Our declaration is that Jesus is the Savior of the world. The life of the baptized revolves around this center. Jesus is the Savior of the world. To proclaim this good news with our lives is the very purpose of our existence. Paul, the apostle, knew Christ. Paul, the apostle, bore witness to Christ. And so that's why at the end of his letter to the Thessalonians, a persecuted and discouraged church, Paul could write such encouraging words that we heard in the second lesson today. To know Jesus is to be able to rejoice even in the midst of challenging times. To know Jesus is an invitation into a life of prayer, an intimate conversation with the God who has created us. To know Jesus gushes forth in a life of gratitude. To know Jesus is to be endowed with the gift of peace, the peace that makes us holy and keeps us faithful until the final coming of Christ. We are in the season of Advent, the season of preparation. But it's not just in Advent that we prepare for the coming of Christ. Every day is a day of preparing for Jesus to come among us. Years ago, I was sitting on a bench in the indoor shopping mall in Naples, Florida. I had a view down a long, cavernous hallway. 
And in front of me, a man whose face I could not see crouched, out, crouched down and called out a name. A short stone's throw ahead of him, a small girl stopped and turned and yelled, Daddy! The face of that little girl testified to the deep and abiding love of her father. I did not need to see his face. I knew his face was full of love. That's our calling, dear church, to point to Jesus with the joy on our faces, the love of our hands, the grace in our voices, the mercy in our service, all of it bearing witness to the one who has given us life. Amen. Together with the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship, especially we give thanks and pray for our music leaders, Judy and Greg. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O oh God. 
your mercy is great. great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a spirit of righteousness that your goodness and mercy is revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful and helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make this church a place of refuge and healing. We remember especially those whom we name aloud. Marjorie, Marjorie June, June, Don, John, John Julie, Julie, Terry, Terry Sharon, Sharon, Gary, Gary Robin, Robin, Clink and Sharon, Sharon Irv, Kevin, Kevin Bill, Bill, Patricia, Patricia Stan, Stan, Sue, Sue Will, Will, Connie, Connie Jody, Jody, Pat, Eric, Eric Gordy, Don, Don, Dolores, Barbara, Barbara Marilyn, Adeline, Adeline, Rita, Rita Ron, Ron, Phyllis, 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 and all whom we remember in our hearts and lift before you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O oh God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This is the time in our service when we would be receiving our offerings. And as we prepare for the coming of Christ, we remember that each week we prepare our hearts by giving an offering to God in thanksgiving for what God has done for us. We thank you for your continuing support for this ministry as we pray God's blessing on our gifts. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God, the creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. Jesus Christ, the long-expected Savior, fill you with love. And the unexpected Holy Spirit guide your journey now and forever. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.